So today I decided to take a short peek inside of my digital oscilloscope. It was donated to me, so thank you for your donation and of course I will take a peek in it, but I will try not to damage it. It's basically a simple pocket digital oscilloscope which comes with some charging USB cable. It contains some lithium ion battery in it and there is this cable. It's not a proper oscilloscope probe, it's basically just a cable with clips. There is no division in it or anything else. It's just for low frequencies, of course. But I think I can use my probe from my analog oscilloscope with this one, even though the voltage scale may be wrong. And here's the manual for it, which is kind of chinglish, but you can still get the meaning. The resolution of the screen, it's 5 MHz, 20 mega samples per second. Some description of the controls and some parameters of it. Again, the bandwidth, sampling rate, race time, the input impedance, time range, vertical sensitivity, maximum voltage with times one probe, it's 40 volts, the capacity of the battery, operation time, and it has afterglow effect. This basically means that the trace remains on the screen up to 8 scan cycles, basically. Strong warning. So now let's try to quickly test it and then see what's inside of it. There is a switch, I can turn it on. Some logo and it works. You can see the trace on the screen. Here you can set the voltage range the time base and let's connect this to it and connect some signal to it. I can for example use the signal that comes from my clamp meter when it's set to measuring capacitors because it has to use some kind of AC voltage to measure capacitors and it does something now. Let's zoom it in and it uses a sawtooth to measure capacitors, as you can see. I can zoom it horizontally or vertically, that's too much. That's nice, it works nicely. It displays the frequency, the peak to peak voltage, which is basically the voltage from the lowest point to the highest point, voltage per division and time per division. You can stop it. Now it freezes or run. Here's the menu. More measure. Not sure what's this. Show cage. This is basically the grid. Now it's without a grid. Automatic 50%. It basically sets the trigger level to 50% of the signal, basically to the middle multi buffer. This is basically the afterglow. So it's Imitating a long persistence screen of an analog oscilloscope, basically. Save wave or view. This is basically to save the waveforms. Now my memory is empty. Calibration. It's probably some kind of self calibration. And night mode. And now it's inverted. But of course I like the night mode more because it reminds me of an analog oscilloscope more. This looks much better. Automatic set. It basically sets itself automatically to some kind of good looking display. Even though of course you may want to zoom it more. Times 1, times 10. This is probably to display the voltage with times 10 probe. Even though it didn't work well in one of my videos. And the mode button is important. You can set it to... Basically, move your trigger level. It's the blue arrow here. When you put it outside of the voltage range, it's out of sync, basically. Now it's in sync. Now it's not synchronized. I can change the trigger level to rising or falling edge. Now it triggers when it basically goes down through this level or now it triggers when it goes up through this level of voltage. I can zoom it vertically, zoom it by changing the voltage scale or horizontally zoom it by changing the time base, basically. And now I can just slide it up and down. And here's the trigger point, basically. 
Now we set it to trigger with a rising edge and the trigger level is here. So it triggers here when it's rising through this voltage level and this arrow actually sets it to start from here. So it also can display what happened before the trigger. It looks quite nice. You can stop it or run it. Here's the menu. Times 10. AC DC. But it doesn't seem to do much. And this basically switches the functions of those arrows. And this button seems to switch between automatic, single or normal. But this button 50% trigger level is quite useful. You just press it when it's out of sync and it synchronizes nicely. And so it seems to work quite nicely and now let's take a look in it. Let's turn it off, disconnect it and there are four screws in it. So let's open them and see what's inside. And that's it. It's easy to open. And it contains 1500 mAh battery, it seems. The manual says 1200 mAh, but the battery is 1500 mAh. This is the first time I see some Chinese product, which is actually better than what it claims. That's interesting. What does it contain? Not much of it, several chips, some probably microcontroller, some other chips here, and those six are those optocouplers, that's interesting, and a bridge rectifier, probably, some diode, or it's actually a crystal maybe. But now let's try to disconnect the battery and take a closer look at it. And so let's try to identify the components in it. This one is probably a crystal. It seems like a 20 MHz crystal to me. Here's the main microcontroller, probably. It's an ARM microcontroller. It's a 32 bit microcontroller and its voltage range is lower than the voltage range of a lithium ion battery, so there has to be some voltage regulator in it. And the linear voltage regulator seems to be this. Its marking is ODN, but it's just a short marking or SMD top code. And here's the datasheet with the top code here, and the actual marking of it is TLV700, and it's a low dropout voltage regulator. Here's some example schematic and pinout and some input and output voltage ranges. There also seems to be some other voltage regulator, but it does the opposite. It actually increases the voltage instead of reducing it, but there is no inductor in it. It's basically a charge pump. It uses a capacitor to basically increase the voltage. And here's the marking of it. It's this component. Here is the input voltage, which covers the voltage range of a lithium-ion battery, and the output is 4.94, or roughly 5 volts. So there is probably some circuitry that requires 5 volts for its operation. And the last package out of those three tiny packages is this one. Here is the marking of it. And it's basically some kind of high-frequency op-amp. And this package near the USB input is a charging controller, controlling the charging process of this battery, which is not a surprise. Here's the marking, TP4056. It's a 1 amp linear lithium-ion battery charger. And there is some example schematic. And there is some other chip near the microcontroller. Here's the marking of it. And it's a flash memory, and it probably contains the program or also the saved waveforms and the user settings. Some pinout of it, and some internal diagram. And then there is also this big chip. And it's an 8-bit high-speed analog to digital converter, which is definitely needed in an oscilloscope, of course. Here's the pinout, and some internal diagram, and some example schematic of it. And there is also some package which looks like a bridge rectifier, but it's definitely not. Here's the marking of it, and it's a single pole, normally open, 4-pin Optomos relay. Basically a solid state relay with a MOSFET at the output, or some kind of opto-isolated MOSFET. 
And then there is those six optocouplers. They really look like they are normal optocouplers. And they are probably here to switch the voltage ranges. They are probably switching some kind of resistive divider here, which is also compensated by parallel capacitors for higher frequencies. And this solid state relay seems to switch this capacitor in series with the input. So it probably switches the AC or DC measurement. When it's on, it's probably DC, and when it's off, it's AC only. So this side of it is the output, and this is the LED in it with some series resistor. And then it goes into the microcontroller. But for some odd reason, there seems to be some kind of blob of rosin or something around this solid state relay. Did they have to solder it manually because there was some problem in the manufacture? Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but it seems to me that the AC only setting does not work. As I already mentioned in one of my previous videos where I used this oscilloscope. So did I blow it or is it faulty from a manufacture? This is normally open solid state relay, so with no battery it should be turned off, but... The output of it, which is in parallel to this capacitor, seems to be shorted. It should be off, but... It's 0, 0.0 ohms. Is it from a manufacturer or did I blow it? And is it actually this solid state relay shorted out or this capacitor? The maximum blocking voltage is 100 volts. Did I exceed it? So let's try to break one of the connections to be able to see which one is shorted out. And now let's try to measure it again. The solid state relay is not shorted now and so it's probably the capacitor, which is the better option for me. It's easier to replace a capacitor than some special solid state relay, of course. The only problem is that I have absolutely no idea what capacitance it was. And the input resistance of it should be 1 mega ohm. How oh, it's 400 kilo ohms? Did I blow some other components in the resistive divider or was it like this from the manufacturer? It says 1 mega ohm input resistance or impedance, but for DC it's the same. Okay, so I've measured those resistors in this voltage divider and they are all fine. And also those capacitors in parallel to them are also fine. None of them is shorted out. That's all weird, but if anybody has the same oscilloscope, please tell me what's the input resistance of your oscilloscope. You can measure it like this. Does it show 1 mega ohm or 400 kilo ohms? And does your AC only range work? And what's the capacitance of this capacitor? Can you measure it for me, please? Thanks. But now, of course, let's take a look from the other side of the board. There are five screws, so let's remove them. And so the screws are gone, and what's under it? Well, not much of it in it. Just the buttons and the display. No other component is here. And under the display, there is basically nothing. It's just this display on this kind of ribbon flat cable, which is probably quite easy to break, so I have to be careful. And those probably double-sided sticky tapes, or... Yes, they are double-sided sticky tapes. But this layer is not removed, so the display is loose in it. So the display was originally meant to be glued to those thick double-sided sticky tapes, but it's not. But it probably makes sense because if it's glued in a wrong place, it wouldn't fit into this frame. And the display goes into this frame quite tightly. It doesn't move. So it seems right. And those soft foamy tapes just press it into the frame. But let's put it back together before I break this ribbon cable, which is quite fragile. And there is not much to see from this side anyway. And let's put the screws back. And of course I turn them counterclockwise first. Until it clicks and then screw them back. To find the original thread. Instead of completely shredding it. Because they go into plastic. And the battery seems to be protected. It has some board on it with some circuitry. So it seems quite well built to me. But I'm not sure if this capacitor was faulty from the manufacturer or did I blow it? 
Now let's try to desolder the faulty capacitor. Here it is. But after desoldering it, it doesn't seem to be shorted out. It shows about 4.8 micro, probably 4.7 micro nominal. So is there something else shorted out on the board? It's not. So it probably was shorted out from a manufacturer by some blob of solder. So let's put the capacitor back and also fix the track I've cut. So now it's all back together and let's test it. The capacitor is back, the connection is fixed and the blob of rosin doesn't matter because it's not conductive. And now the AC-DC switch seems to actually work. Now it's DC and now it's AC only. And the capacitor slowly charges because it's quite a high capacitance and it shows just the AC component. And let's go back to DC and it works right. When I switch it to AC only, it removes the DC component using the capacitor. But of course the DC component can be up to just 100 volts because the solid state relay is rated for just 100 volts. And of course I'm not sure what's the rating of the capacitor. If it's a lower voltage rating, the DC component has to be even lower. Not to damage it. It finally seems to work. So the conclusion is that this capacitor was probably shorted out by some blob of solder from a manufacturer. Or maybe is this capacitor shorting out intermittently? That's also possible. If the problem goes back I will put another capacitor in it. Of course this capacitor is one of the first components to be damaged if you connect it to a too high voltage. But why the input resistance is just 400 kilo ohms and not 1 mega ohm remains a mystery. But when I add the resistances of those all resistors in this chain, I actually get 400 kilo ohms. When it's set to DC, I can see the resistance at the input, and when I set it to AC, the resistance disappears or the capacitor actually slowly charges. And. Now it's back to 400 kilo ohms. And can I charge it? Let's plug it in. And it shows a symbol of a charging battery. So this is Diagon Wild and see you in my next videos. And thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon. I really appreciate your support. And I also plan to make another video how to use it and what mistakes to avoid. And problems of digital oscilloscopes like for example aliasing.